Hello, good afternoon. This time I'm talking about Beyond Obsession. An album that wasn't a concept album, an album that really wasn't an album, and an album that wasn't really constructed at all in the same way as I usually construct albums. So in theory, is it an album? Was it an album? In theory, uh, it came out between the first two albums and then between the, the next album and then a few albums later. Um, so, as you can ascertain, uh, it's a broken down album. It's an album that was made up of bits and pieces. Um, I should explain. And this means rolling back, so it depends if you're watching how, how you're watching these videos, if you're watching them in chronological order or not. And I don't mean to confuse, but in theory, I've classified this as the fourth album, although it's not an album. Um, when I finished the Great Distraction. Um, yeah, I, I, I mentioned this before. I didn't think there was any anything else in me, or there would be anything else uh, to record. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I didn't. I don't think the album, uh, the Great Distraction, took off how I may have interpreted. I thought it might do, um, but it certainly didn't distract me for, or detract me from wanting to not do something else. It was quite weird. Uh, I mean, almost immediately the album was finished. I had this kind of thing inside myself that just said, you got to do more. You know, what are you doing with your life? Uh, you've got this free time. Um, great, you can do lots of things in that free time, but you really enjoyed the process of making the great distraction and the music there. Um, why, why does it have to end? Um, so basically I started on another track um, and looking here, uh, yeah, that's, that's going to be useless because it's not quite uh, the, the, the line-up of, of the EP that I made. I made an EP called Beyond the Inferno uh, and on that there were six tracks. Uh, and the other album, uh, the other EP, sorry, later in that year uh, was called Beyond, no it wasn't, <laughs> it was called Bike Obsessed. So you can see why I did. I, 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 I obviously took the words beyond and obsession and sort of joined them uh, to make that album title. Uh, but because I don't want to cheat people or make people think that um, there isn't, uh, I don't know, some added value to that, uh, there were some tracks uh, that never made the Destiny album. Same sort of vein, but never sort of had the same um, uh, impact as some of them tracks did on Destiny. So, that, so they got sort of sidelined. But subsequently, they didn't get lost. They got added to this album, and that's what I'm saying about the backwards and forwards, the the, the way this uh, the bit of mishmash. But in my weird uh, way of working, um, I didn't leave the construction of Beyond the Inferno in its order, and I didn't leave Bike Obsessed in its order. But actually, personally, I think I should have done because Beyond the Inferno. Them six tracks that arrived came out between the Great Distraction and Power Struggle. Uh, we're again put in chronological or, or that chrono particular order um, because that's how it played best. Um, to sort of get hold of Bike Obsessed uh, and then break that down as well and then sort of mix and merge. No, I don't think, I think it's the first time I really didn't, it was, it was very abstract. Very, very, very abstract. Not, not like me at all to do something like that. Um, I think I'd been looking at other artists and perhaps what they did if they had these kind of moments. Um, so I wasn't really taking in notice of myself at that point. I was, I was, I think perhaps for the first time I was sort of um, struggling and getting ideas from other people uh, rather, rather than going my own thing. Um, but anyway, um, yeah. Uh, I'm going to try, and I do believe it might have worked in this order. So, Sniper um, was probably, the f I don't know, see, see, this is, this is what I mean. I, I, it's a toss up between Sniper and a Western fairy tale. Um, these are definitely um, the first couple of uh, tracks on the EP, but I can't, re can't remember which way around it was. But I'll do it in the order fashion. I mean, Sniper, this, in fact, again, sort of regressing, um, this was almost the first time I started grappling with the idea of concept, because obviously picking a name 
and then making a song around that name. Um, Sniper, you know, I mean, you know, we've, we've seen assassination films and you know terrorist films and Lord knows what. Um, and uh, yes, we, we know what snipers do. Um, so subsequently, um, yeah, I just had this, just wanted to make another audio visual expression via music uh, of this sniper. Uh, and again, I think I pulled it off quite well. Uh, it did get some radio play at some time. Um, a Western fairy tale. Uh, that didn't have the title. I know that had a working title. Wouldn't be able to remember what that was called. Um, but again, as that progressed, <laughs> it's again my interpretation, but I, I heard something that sounded reminiscent in my own mind, that sounded like um, something from a Western. Um, but it didn't sound fully like a Western. And, and you know, I mean, it's, it's quite obvious what I thought it sounded like. So it sounded like this kind of mixture of a Western fairy tale, hence the name. But other people have got different opinions about it, I think. Um, but it was quite nice to start seeing the foundations of this EP building uh, and there is a part of me that started to recognise that I'd finished a great distraction as I had and making these, at least these two tracks, started to give me the impression um, I kind of wished I'd, let, I'd waited a little bit um, with a great distraction and actually added these, these tracks to it but like history dictates and that, these, these kind of things don't, don't happen like that um, and you can't live in regret and as much as I can revisit, go back, rework it, uh, re-put it out in a different, a different fashion I suppose, uh, bolster or make a great distraction better by adding some of these tracks. Um, it's part of your history in music and I'm sure you know not the first or the last to do this kind of thing, you, you sort of live and learn. Um, so I had these great two tracks you know and I was, I was thinking right so this is going to be an EP and I thought I'd make it simple and I thought I was going to make it simple just by making four tracks but if you're getting used to me now uh, I don't make my life simplified I don't make it easy I, I still have to keep going outside this weird kind of box and keep adding extra dimensions so um, looking up at the screen and just looking at the tracks here um, I think it was Glass Elevator but at this point um, my sis, no, sister, my, my daughter had um, started to dabble and quite took a little bit of an interest in what I was doing and <laughs> this is going to be a first but she started to play around um, getting kind of keen and interested and she's the one who actually started Glass Elevator she actually started making a great tune um, which I could see but as, as I've noted uh, with other people who've asked me or wanted to get involved in doing some of this stuff, um, I, I don't see, unless it's time or just the perseverance or the repetitiveness of the process, um, but a lot of people think sometimes they can do this, just like my daughter did, um, but they get to a point where somehow they just, something, something I don't know, they've, they've reached their point and then they can't go on no further. Uh, and she she just sort of drifted away uh, and didn't carry on with it. She got this excellent piece of work, uh, but couldn't really start it or finish it, uh, and just sort of drifted away. I can't remember how long she worked on it for, maybe a couple of days or something, um, but then the thing obviously became tedious and she couldn't go further and she didn't really know what she was doing, uh, she didn't want to take any advice and so on. Um, but I definitely weren't going to let that piece of music go so I, I, I built around it I started working on it myself uh, and, and, and completed it but then of course now I had three tracks to this EP um, I really have to keep checking uh, now I will admit that when it came to Forever Phoenix um, it's a good tune there's nothing really too drastically wrong with it um, but again I felt like I'd hit that wall that I did with making the great distraction um, after I'd done Dark Love on that particular album, I, I suddenly thought, "Hang on a minute, this, this EP process—you know, the idea of him going back to making music—is all important." Um, but suddenly, I was in a in a zone where, where things were getting tougher again. So, I, and, and you know, I'd been through it first time round, so I kind of knew what to expect. I thought maybe something would resurface. Um, but 
and this was again when I started noticing that artists sometimes do this and you end up doing a sort of filler track opposed to a, a proper thoughtful track. Uh, I, again I had no time restrictions, I had no uh, time deadlines but I did in my own mind. I kind of wanted to get this finished and I wanted to get it done. I want to keep pushing the boundaries and so on. Um, so therefore um, Forever Phoenix came about. Um, in theory sometimes when um, I embark on a track like that it still intrigues me a little bit to like when I, where I am now and then I'm looking back in hindsight actually wondering where my mind was or, or why I permitted that to happen but again I think that comes into the category of what I was just saying a minute ago history does what it does for, for lots and lots of different reasons um, I think going forward and where I am today I have to admit I don't think I'd do that because at that stage everything I used to work on I couldn't let it go couldn't let it go at all I had to I had to um, it had to become a finished product and if I'd worked on it and spent lots of time on it it had to still get released um, but I've, I've you know through intuition and noticing things and do, doing music as I do today uh, I don't I don't do that I haven't got time to do that and I don't want to let people down or you know um, devalue uh, a piece of music you know I just wish to um, release a good body of work um, so yeah you know th these these videos were not just designed to tell you the background of the albums but actually to show you how I work and to tell you the truth um, you know the nitty gritty if you like so I, w I wouldn't say I would be overly impressed with that particular track, though again it has got airplay. Um, Euphoria, totally different of course, you know, that burst forward and um, and there was a lovely little piece of music. Um, I had sort of, I don't know, it was sort of in and out of trance and ambient, that kind of thing. Uh, and that worked perfectly. But again, that, um, that actually, that, that was interesting, because that actually came from a track that I had been working on um, with the great distraction and I still had these little remnants uh, and it was a track but it wasn't in that format whatsoever and it was when my ears popped up from listening to this particular track I'd had in the original makeup of great distraction I thought why haven't I used that and I kind of recognized that well because the beginning bits rubbish it's like it's the lead into the kind of thing doesn't sound like it is but there's no doubt about you've got some good stuff going on in the middle of it and you should grow grow that so I did um, I've still got the original Euphoria or Euphoric because there's two versions of it uh, track lurking around somewhere and uh, Euphoria by the way is the mix if you like from the Power Struggle uh, version but there is, there is a difference between the two it just depends how, how keen your ears are um, there is a bit of trickery with what I did um, and I thought it was quite clever at the time and hence the reason why I was releasing Euphoria on the EP in Euphoric on the Power Struggle album, um, hey, Lord knows, you know, it was a different era. I can't remember everything, but um, I thought it was a good idea at the time. Um, going forward, perhaps not. I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, now, while I was in the process of making that uh, EP, um, I had a, a gig or a concert to go to um, that I uh, that I was visiting uh, Berlin uh, to see Tangerine Dream. And uh, I'd never seen Ulrich Schnauz before. Um, yeah, never seen him at all. Um, didn't know his work. Met a friend who had, and he couldn't um, talk highly highly of this guy. And on this particular Tangerine Dream um, anniversary concert, it was um, all the artists who were part of the new lineup of Tangerine Dream all performed their own little piece of work. And I remember just being sort of, um, okay, I've been coerced a little bit by the guy uh, who mentioned his work and sort of highlighted it and, and enhanced it. And I was really keen to sort of embody it and, and sit there and take it. And, and I did. Something, something, something happened. <laughs> and when I was flying back, I had this kind of idea. And by the time I got back, um, I was then working on the, the sixth and final track for my strange boosted EP, you know, as I said before. Kind of a four EP, kind of a four EP track, or a six EP track, um, and so therefore solar energy um, burst forward, 
um, and came about. And if you listen, I mean, I, th I think it does. I don't like copying people, but I think it has something about um, a, a, an influence by Ulrich Schnauz within that because it was fresh, completely fresh. You know, I come away hearing something I hadn't really heard before um, uh, and took that away. And when I was working on that final track, it just kind of become, in my mind, like, God, that guy's really had to be of an impact on me, you know, a bit of an influence. Um, and so therefore, that's what happened with Solar Energy. Now, um, coming back then to horror show, I've mentioned before how the idea gave birth because my interest with horror when I was young. But during 2013 up to 2015, before my little heart problem, um, I got heavily into cycling. And therefore, the idea, like with the horror show, was to start looking at concepts and ideas that if I was going to do music, maybe I should be investing some time into putting more energy into the music that was based on hobbies I actually had. So, you know, it was hand in glove, you know, I did cycling, I knew a bit about bikes by that time, I was reading a lot, I was doing the energy, you know, I was doing the fitness, the diets, you name it. Um, I, I, I grew up listening to Jean-Michel Jean and Kraftwerk too, uh, and very much aware of Tour de France. Um, and I'd even been to see uh, the Tour de France here in England uh, back in 2014, I think it was. So it, it became clear that I should at least embark upon trying to do something. Um, so again, it was an EP uh, called Bike Obsessed. That was very challenging. It wasn't an easy task to, to, to create because I suppose in my mixed up mind at the time, I was definitely thinking of the chains, the pedals, you know, the, all that kind of thing. The, the, the Tour de France single by Kraftwerk, you know, it, you can't beat it. And I didn't want to replicate it. Um, but in a, in a way, you feel like that's almost all you can kind of do. Um, so, so one of the tracks there, just seeing. Um, Want to know specifically, uh, because there's a, there's a few. Um, it's probably Changing Gears. Um, yeah, I think cha Changing Gears and Motivation, the two of them, were sort of hand in glove to some extent. Slightly different takes on, on the whole cycling procedure. Um, but, you know, it depends how you embark upon cycling and what you read about cycling. Um, but if you're reading cycling magazines, they're, they're constantly telling you to push yourself, push yourself, push yourself. And say, 2015, I pushed myself too far. Um, but, you know, probably a reason for it. Uh, I won't be sitting here today doing these videos based on the music I did if it wasn't for pushing myself hard. Uh, and um, and if you don't know, the reason is, is because that's when you're going to burn more calories. You know, it's, it's not, you're not going to, you know, it's, a lot of it's self-evident. But if you're just going to coast down a hill, um, you're not doing anything. You know, you're just having a bit of fun, but, but you're certainly not burning any calories. If you've got something like, you're looking up ahead of you, and you've got two or three mile hill, <laughs> whatever gradient it is, and you've got to somehow stay on your bike and keep cycling up that for, for the whole duration. Um, it's it's an effort, and I don't know where your mind goes um, because you sort of, uh, many many parts of you get taken over, uh, and you constantly kind of hear the, the voices in the cycling magazines um, that are telling you to push yourself, you know, feel the burn, all this kind of malarkey, uh, and if you give up, you're going to fail and be a failure. And I don't like failing. I don't like being a failure. Um, so it was like as much as your body wanted to give out and you couldn't couldn't go any further, you, you somehow do it. And you, but but then there was elation because when you did, when you got to the top, um, you'd look back and think, I just did that, I achieved that, and, it, and it's a great sense of achievement as much as um, whatever else it's doing to your body. You know, making you fit, energizing you, losing pounds, you know, whatever. You, um, it's got to be a great thing. So I kind of took what I could from that cycling experience and put it into the music. But as I said, I think with uh, Changing Gears, there was nothing but a sort of a B-rate version of Kraftwerk's Tour de France. Motivation, something slightly different, um, but on that theme. I'm also looking here uh, because, I don't know if I did do six tracks. Maybe I didn't. I'm sure I did, I can't spot it. Oh yes, right, okay, so some endurance as well, I mean, hey, how, how is that any much different to motivation? 
as I say, I mean, it was, an, it was, it was, yeah. So, so bolting that on, endurance is is very much in the same league as them first two tracks. Uh, again, endurance being very much closer to motivation, obviously, um, but not breaking any sort of real boundaries with my music. I don't think in this particular um, genre. As I said, it was a tough thing for me to go down, uh, and I sort of was losing my own sound in this mode. This album, sorry, EP was made between um, Power Struggle and Horror Show, uh, and again, it was probably uh, finding a footing, understanding concepts, this kind of thing. But I thought I'd do a better, a better job with it, if you like, because it was something I knew. So it just goes to show in some ways Again, it's a learning curve, it can teach you different things because you may end up doing something you think you know, but when you when push comes to shove, it perhaps doesn't work quite so well. The tracks that I do like from that EP, however, are the two more mellower, softer tracks, which did do the turnaround, which were related to the um, <laughs> jumping on a bike and cycling down a hill, because both Coastal Route and um, uh, Freewheeling are very much that. Freewheeling in particular. Freewheeling, I remember uh, pulling that together and imagining a particular hill that I loved flying down around about 40 miles an hour uh, on, a, on a fairly regular basis. Um, and you just, this hill would just, you know, unrelenting if you're going up, but if you're going down, it's brilliant. I mean, absolutely brilliant. So this freewheeling was just like imagining that. And coastal route, because not that I've done a coastal uh, route on a bike, but you know, I've, I've, I've driven around coastal routes, obviously, and in cars and so on, and coaches, etc. Uh, and it is beautiful, and it was just quite nice to think about being on being on a bike, doing that kind of freewheeling, but around on a coastal route. So that's where the music came from for there. So I, I did enjoy that experience. Um, and them two tracks, obviously, a lot more mellow, certainly much more ambient. And this also was a time when uh, my son was introducing me to a few tracks. I can never pronounce this right. I think it's, it's called Tsunami. Um, I can't remember who it's by, but I did like the track. But he was, he, was get, he was pushing a lot of these tracks at me, and he loved these drops. He absolutely loved these drops, but subsequently, so did I. Um, they were of my genre and taste. Um, so for sure, they were pricking up my ears, but I love the drops. So when it came to my sixth track uh, for the EP, it did seem to make sense to go and embark upon... Uh, a, a track based on drops and I think I did reasonably well with it Adrenaline Rush um, you know it, it 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 wasn't my usual thing it was a totally different genre can't even remember the name of that genre now um, but I thought oh yeah a, a, like a dub a dubstep type track uh, and I thought well, why not you know I did, did with Power Struggle you know I, I, I didn't do any dubstep kind of work on Power Struggle um, but I will uh, on the CP why not give it a go um I wouldn't say I'm sitting here today thinking, yeah, look at that, that was, that was excellent, because it was no, it was nowhere near any of the people who were doing that kind of work. Um, they were so much better. But he gave me some experience. Uh, and um, also, I suppose, relating to the fact that, yeah, you can touch it, but you can't quite do it. Um, staying your, stay more in your safety zone, if that makes more sense. And then, of course, we roll forward. Now, obviously, Destiny is an album that comes a little later. You know, it's a seventh or eighth album. Uh, and, you know, that's, that's uh, coming in another video. Um, but uh, because I'm talking about this makeup of Beyond Obsession, I kind of want to clear this album up and, and you know, move forward to the next one. Um, I'll clarify and talk about the three tracks that didn't make Destiny briefly. Um, well, I'm, I'm looking straight away. Zen was probably just um, somewhere in between Destiny, again, trying to do something, but it wasn't doing anything different. It comes very much back to Craftwork in there. It's a very much like a, a numbers or something uh, that Craftwork would have done. Uh, but I got a feel for it, and, and I did kind of think, yeah, let's just carry on. Um, and so therefore I did a, a, another sort of B-rate Craftworky type thing. Um, and you know you can see exactly that's why it didn't fit the destiny structure it was like it, it gave birth out of nowhere just an idea um but yeah how, how can how can something sound like craft work fit on an album like destiny it's, it's just yeah it isn't going to happen but um but when it comes to joyride 
and uh, Silent Killer. Um, yeah, they were they were they were pieces of work um, that I carried through, uh, and and thought progress on both in actual fact did fit the remap for Destiny. Um, but it was just that as, as I was getting more, as I was progressing more and more with Destiny, and I had a lot more rocky edge going on in this um, Destiny album, um, they just seemed too soft for that um, album. So, hence, as I say, it was it was a weird time. Beyond Obsession hadn't been created. The EP still existed in their original format. There was a need to sort of pull them together. I explained earlier. Um, but then these three tracks that didn't make Destiny suddenly popped onto this outpouring. And that wraps up Beyond Obsession. That really tells you the nitty gritty behind the album I made that wasn't, <laughs> if that makes kind of sense. So thanks again for tuning in. Uh, and I think the next album I'll be talking about is the album Time, uh, my fifth album. Uh, and that should be quite interesting actually. Uh, as we keep rolling forward, my memory's better with obviously things that took place um, a little closer. So going back in time is, 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 is struggling, the real importance for making these, out, uh, these videos. So as I say, um, look forward to the next one. Cheers for now then, take care, bye bye.